In this video, we're gonna talk about the best electric bikes that you can buy in 2024. I'm Ryan from E-Bike Escape. And I'm JT from E-Bike Escape. And if you've never seen one of our reviews before, why should you listen to us? Well, let's go inside where it's warm and we'll show you our collection of e-bikes. We've reviewed over 100 electric bikes and we have about 40 here, but which ones made it to the top in each of our categories? That's what we're gonna find out. And be sure to stay tuned till the end of the video. We're gonna share some predictions on how we feel the consumer market is gonna look in the e-bike space for the rest of 2024. First, we need to set some ground rules for this grand ceremony today. These are only electric bikes that we have reviewed on the channel, and you can check out any of our in-depth reviews on any of the electric bikes featured today. And our second consideration was gonna be price. All of these e-bikes will come in under a $3,000 price cap. And third, any runners up as well as our most up to date list can be found in the blog post down in the description. And one quick favor, if you're looking to purchase from any of the brands we featured today, we would really appreciate your support by using the links down in the description before you make your purchase. Thank you so much for your support. With that, let's get the 2024 E-Bike Escape Best Electric Bike Awards ceremony started. Our first category is Best Commuter Electric Bike. For 2024 is the Vivolt Centauri. We thought long and hard about this one, thinking about what makes the ideal commuter electric bike. And JT and I went back and forth and we decided that the Trifecta makes the best commuter electric bike. You might be wondering what that is. That's gonna be a mid-drive belt-driven electric bike with an internally geared hub, no maintenance, no mess no chain, and this is a very smooth electric bike. And what makes this bike even more compelling is the recent price drop, which is why it made it to the winner of this category, it is currently priced under $2,000 for a mid-drive bike. What's your favorite thing about the Centauri? Well, not only is the price that low, it also comes with an internally geared hub and a Gates belt drive. So like Ryan hinted at, no maintenance, no mess. You don't have to adjust gears. You don't have to worry about the chain wearing out. The Gates belt drive alone, I'm a maintenance guy and like the Tinker, this bike is gonna appease none of those from me. Gates estimates you can get somewhere upwards of 15,000 miles before you even need to replace your belt. And even more, the Vivo team is located in the Pacific Northwest. So they're very familiar with rain and commuting in all seasons which is why you see some of the very nice aesthetic things like the reflective V-Volt logo. We also really like these nice street tires and we did get the optional fenders, which go all the way down to the back, which I highly recommend if you are using this bike for commuting. And one other thing that is not quite as, a, as apparent is it's relatively lightweight because it does have a smaller battery. It's not as heavy as some of those full-size electric bikes. And I know that small battery size may turn some of you guys off from why we would pick this as a commuter bike, but this is a mid-drive e-bike and mid-drive e-bikes are able to leverage some extra efficiency to get you extra range even on some smaller batteries. All right, let's get to the next one. Our next category, and we didn't talk about that we're gonna have some surprises for you today, and this is certainly one of them. This is our feature-packed electric bike category. Drum roll. All right, JT, what are we looking at here? So we have the Favorite Bikes Hybrid Pro. This had to be a pick for me and why I pushed when Ryan and I were talking because this bike just packs some things that I haven't really seen from any other manufacturer in the space. First one has to be the security lock that's integrated into the rear wheel that automatically unlocks via the RFID key or through the display. And then the second functionality on this bike that really just stands out to me, the headlight has multiple modes and one of those modes is a flashing functionality, which is something that we've seen on aftermarket lights or added handlebar lights for a long period of time, but it's not something we have seen built into the actual light function of a bike. One thing that stood out to me was the two riding profiles. One that limits the power under, say, 750 watts, and then it lets you go into a wheelie mode, we'll call it, which gives you more higher wattage so you can go a little bit faster. That's a cool feature that we haven't seen. So those three things made us choose this favorite electric bike. For our feature category. Our next category is best affordable electric bike. And this is the bike that if someone asks me, what is the cheapest electric bike I can buy? 
and perhaps not surprisingly, it's gonna be a electric XD light. So my recommendation is don't go to Amazon and buy the cheapest electric bike. Just go to Electric's website. It's a single speed bike. It's super simple. It's very accessible. It's a smaller frame. It feels like riding a mini BMX style bike as you're a kid, but it's still adjustable even for tall riders like me at six feet tall. I have tons of fun on this electric bike and it still sports a lot of the same features that we've known to love from Electric. Well, and not only features on the bike itself, but as well as their after purchase customer support, and as well as their bikes are one of the few, I don't know if there's any others out there, that arrive to you 100% assembled. So such as the XP Lite or any of the XP series, you get the bike, you open it up, you do no assembly, the bike literally rolls out of the bike, unfolds, uh, and you are ready to ride. And one other thing that the XP Lite stood out to us for is that sometimes when you step into the lower end price points, the voltage system on the bike steps down so the overall amount of power you're getting steps down, but that is not the case for the XP Lite. The XP Lite still maintains a 48 volt system. And still this bike can be customized with some awesome electric accessories. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next category. On to the next category. All right, this next one is a contentious category. We'll get to that in a second. The best folding electric bike on the market today is. This is the Ride One Up Portola that starts at $9.95. You can spend $100 more and get a larger battery. This entered the market in late 2023 and I think shook up the market a little bit. Yeah, Ryan and I went a little bit back and forth on this one because the easy answer is the XP 3.0, but when the Portola was released, it really kind of took what the XP 3.0 was doing and put Ride One Up spin on it and really made it that much better. And we're now we're not gonna go into all of the specifics as to why the Portola is better than the 3.0. We're gonna make a separate comparison video. Let us know in the comments down below if that's something you guys wanna see. And I wanna know if you guys disagree with this choice, UXP 3.0 owners out there. Well, the Rise, subscribe. We're gonna compare the Portola to the XP 3.0. Where this bike really shines is you get everything that most people want front suspension, a decent sized battery, powerful motor, fenders, integrated rear rack, thumb throttle, hydraulic disc brakes, which is still shocking on a thousand dollar bike. thousand dollars, yeah. But then also you get slightly upgraded components like a trigger shifter from Shimano, as well as an Altus rear derailleur and it's a very clean look. The other, as Ryan hinted at, the clean look, they've added some carbon fiber accents around, blacked out the front stanchions. Ride One Up kind of puts a stylish twist on the folding e-bike that we haven't seen really at this price point in a long time. And speaking of stylish, it's offered in three different colorways. All right, let's get to our next pick. All right. The bike case cover really fits uh, yeah. these bikes really yeah, well. Yeah, we're trying to not show you guys our pick beforehand, and this bike case cover so far has fit every single bike from all of the categories. Available at shop.ebikeescape.com, along with some other high-quality e-bike accessories. Let's get to our next category, best utility bike. I think a lot of people should consider utility electric bikes. For this bike, we picked the Rad Runner 3 Plus, their latest generation utility bike. JT, what do you like about this the most? So we picked this e-bike for our utility category for the number one reason of its accessories. Rad makes some very high quality accessories, but the ones for this bike in particular definitely had a little bit of extra thought put into them, starting with this locking hard shell front glove box, but there was also some really nice locking panniers for the rear. You could take off this additional seat and put um, extra cargo carrying capacity. So whether you're looking for a bike to maybe run a kid to school around or to commute on, or if you're looking to maybe run deliveries on, this bike has a lot of utility and should definitely be considered for multiple needs. It's the best utility bike for passengers. One, because of the rear seat, but also if you're the one doing the pedaling, the seat can be raised and you can still get in an optimal riding position. This is something that Rad Power Bikes has patented. I also like Rad Power Bikes because their bikes are very accessible. It's an easy brand for us to recommend if you're new to electric bikes. Now I will caveat this, this is on the pricier end of the Rad lineup and to be frank, all of the electric bikes that we feature today. So if you're on a budget, you can get many of the nice features of what this bike has with the Rad Runner 2 or the other Rad Runner Plus. 
which even at those lower price points still have a lot of the same utility. They just don't have a lot of the same accessory outfitting, but they still have a lot of utility built into their frame design and that nice adjustable seat and kind of moped-ish style frame. All right, next category is best lightweight electric bike. And I want to point out that this is best relatively lightweight yeah, electric bike. Putting in context, they are all still e-bikes. So we we set the bar for this category at anything below 50 pounds. And the winner is the Velotrip T-Series. This is the T1 ST. And this is the T1. What I liked about these bikes is they're still relatively affordable, but also they have the simplicity factor. The cable integration is really good. They both hide the batteries extremely well. And even more, Velotrick is leading the way with smart features, Apple Find My, and in particularly, the more expensive T1 has really nice app integration. In fact, probably the best app integration that I've personally used on an e-bike. They even have a fingerprint reader on the top of there. So I like what Velotrick is doing, and that's why I chose these bikes as the best lightweight. And even more, you have the choice between two of them with largely the same specs with two minor differences. Our review video goes through the, that in more detail. And one of the things that I liked about these two bikes is number one, gonna be price. The orange bike, the ST over here comes in at $9.99 and the standard T1 over here comes in at $15.99. But even with them being lightweight and coming in at some lower than average prices, they still come packed with features. You get Tektro hydraulic disc brakes on both models as well as higher than normal Shimano drivetrain components. All right, let's get these lightweight bikes out yeah. of the way and get to the next to the category. Next Next category is best moped style electric bike. And the winner of this category is from a brand I never expected to release a moped style e-bike. And the winner is the Ride One Up Rev One. This is the full suspension. They also have a hardtail. Ride One Up really went at Super 73 when it comes to moped style electric bikes. And they launched two different models. 15.95, 22.95, and they outspec almost any other moped style e-bike at this category. And two things that you're definitely gonna be considering if you're shopping for a moped style e-bike is gonna be battery size and motor performance. And both of these models, hardtail and full suspension, pack a pretty big punch in both those categories, sporting a 15 and 20 amp hour battery, and they both sport the same motor. However, the full suspension has a slightly larger controller, so you get a little bit more power, a little bit more top speed out of the full suspension versus the hardtail. However, the hardtail is still a very capable bike and when you consider that $15.95 price point, you're not gonna find another moped style e-bike that matches that. And spoiler alert, over 30 miles an hour if you unlock it for off-road mode on the full suspension version. And of course you have moped style headlights. They really did it all. You can get dual batteries. They have some other cool accessories that you can purchase from Ride One Up's website, including a rear passenger package. And some, they also have a utility rear rack for if you wanted to say carry some cargo because you're going to be commuting. I think you can even hang panniers off of that rear rack system as well. So Ride One Up has really kind of thought and made this, in my mind, the ultimate commuter um, moped style e-bike if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for something maybe that uh, bridges that gap between motorcycle and bike. All right, let's get to the next category. On to the next one. All right, we're gonna have to apologize for this next one because this bike is so popular, we don't even have it here <laughs> yeah. because my dad wanted it for himself. This category is best fat tire electric bike and the winner is the Aventon Adventure Point Two. Aventon really took the fat tire space by storm when they released the first gen Adventure and then they made it even better with the torque sensor, something not a lot of people are doing turn signals, it has Aventon's signature smooth welding throughout, app connectivity, and it is probably the most popular fat tire electric bike on the market. And if Facebook group size are anything to go by, the Aventon Aventure has some very active groups based just solely on the Aventure model from Aventon. And something that also put Aventon over some of the other ones is going to be the brand itself. 
a vent in being in this space for a long time, yes, but also having over 1,000 dealerships in the United States, which means if you don't wanna order it online, you can likely find a bike shop close to you that you can get it from and test out for yourself. And of course you have them yeah. to rely on for service. And as Ryan kind of hinted on there, having the availability of a dealer network for that maintenance, but as well as being able to sit on the bike beforehand, as you can tell, people are not made equally. So not all fitments on e-bikes are gonna be the same. So having the availability to go in, sit on a bike, test it out, that's a big one. And that's why for this category, one of the most popular e-bike categories out there, we had to pick the event and adventure too. We know the uh, bike case cover does not fit this bike. So can you guess what the next category is? This is the best electric trike. And the winner is the electric XP trike. Now electric didn't create the trike category, but they certainly popularized it with a $1,500 foldable electric trike. JT, why did we pick this trike? So this trike, as Ryan said, $1,500 trike, prior to this trike coming to market, it was hard to find a trike below $3,000 that was electric that had quality components on it or really had not a front drive motor. So the XP trike was really one of the first trikes to come out that had a differential rear end. It's got hydraulic disc brakes. It comes to you fully assembled. So you literally pull it out of the box and unfold it, it's ready to ride. And Electric is able to deliver to you fully assembled thanks to all of its folding functionality so that if you maybe live in a smaller apartment or you're trying to maybe throw this in the back of an RV, it folds up into a fairly small form factor so that you can transport it very easily. It has a nice size battery, 14 amp hours, and the motor as we experienced, check out our hill climb test, is extremely powerful. It's also very accessible. This is really a mobility device. It has a 14 mile per hour top speed. We've done a bunch of videos on this trike. If you're looking at it, I highly recommend you check that out because that's going to be the most helpful to you if you're looking at this bike. And like all the electric bikes, it has awesome optional accessories, rear basket, front basket, nice support seat. And this was a maybe the easiest category for us. It kind of was. I have reviewed quite a few other trikes at this point, and they all are very nice trikes. Everyone kind of stands out for its own reasons, even the XP trike, but none of them are as complete and as po well polished of a package as the XP trike is. So if you are in the market for a electric trike, be sure to check out the playlist that I will put in the upper right-hand corner for you right now so that you can reference that to maybe go through, like I said, and pick out the one that suits your needs the best or whatever accessibility need you do have. All right, let's get to the next category. And if you liked this category, you might like the next one. The next category is best e-bikes for seniors. Let's see who the winner is. This is the Ufree City Robin X Plus. Now, I know this is the category of best e-bikes for seniors, but this is kind of like the best, most comfortable electric yeah. bike for anyone. So if you're not a senior, it's okay, you're still gonna love this bike. Let me talk about why I like it. Comfort being number one, a quality SR Sun Tour suspension seat post with a SR Sun Tour, again, name brand front suspension. And then it has all the other creature comforts, a nice saddle, as well as swept back handlebars, adjustable stem. They went with a super bright front headlight. And this bike is usually priced at $20.99. And something that I feel like the market doesn't often think about is customers wanna just buy a bike and they might not necessarily wanna outfit it with a bunch of accessories. This bike just comes set up, ready to go. You even get a cafe lock so you can lock your bike up. Comes in really nice paint colors. And of course, the nice step-through frame, which is more accessible to hop on. And this is why we chose it. And JT, what did I miss there? You really didn't miss anything, right? I pretty much hit everything there. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing for me is I have to rescope my own mind sometimes because I don't mind purchasing something. And I've done this with cars uh, time and time through. I'm like, oh, this is a great $1,000 car. $4,000 later, it's a fantastic car. So this bike may come in a little bit on the higher end of the price point compared to some other commuters out there, but you already get a $100 uh, suspension seat post. You already get a name brand front fork. You already get that adjustable stem. So they've really, as Ryan said, kind of checked all the boxes for you so that you can pull this bike out of the box, 
put air in the tires and go riding. So it really is a nice bike. Ufree puts a lot of thought. There's another reason that Ufree only really has one style of bike as they want to do one bike really well. And we think that they've hit the nail on the head by doing the City Robin as a step through, easily accessible e-bike. And on the X Plus, they changed it to a torque sensor, which you don't often find at this price point. So it's a very natural riding experience, which just amplifies your power. And that's why we made it our best electric bike for, for seniors. seniors. The next category is a long one. This is the best cargo electric bike. And the winner is the Electric Expedition. JT and I have both agreed on this one. We've been putting the most miles on the Expedition. Why don't you walk through what Electric did differently than any other cargo bike? Yeah, so the Expedition came to the market at a time when really an affordable cargo e-bike was $2,000 plus. I mean, you could go well above that, but this bike came in well below that with a single and dual battery option. The dual battery option was something that also stood out, not even only mentioning because of the price of the dual battery model, but because it was actually hard to find a dual battery cargo e-bike. So somebody like me who lives out in the country, I have that little bit extra range to get to and from the inner city really nicely. But they also chose to outfit this very smartly with the accessories. So you have this rear kid orbiter, you could add a single rear seat for rear passenger, you have your running boards. And hidden underneath all of that stuff here in the rear, the other reason that I chose the Expedition as my daily commuter per se, is going to be that rear motor. The performance that that rear motor puts out is very impressive. Like all electric bikes, it comes virtually fully assembled and I own a $5,000 cargo electric bike that I also love, but there's a reason that my wife and I always come back to the Expedition, and that is the battery and motor power, especially when you're hauling kids. Ryan's kids are a little bit younger than mine, so they're a little bit also on the lighter side. My kids are six and four, so we're getting really close to the max weight and payload capacity of this bike, but this motor, we live near some pretty steep hills here, some of the ones that I test on, and this bike makes it up no problem. So that again, that motor performance cannot be understated, and that extra battery performance is really nice to get to the top of the hill and not see your battery bar at about that halfway point. And if you're considering the Expedition, be sure to check out our video. JT and I did a 1,000 mile update that goes through in depth how both of us use the electric bike, what the cons are, what we really like about the bike, how to load this bike, and of course, how we both have accessorized it. All right, on to the next one, JT. <laughs> we don't review a ton of mid-drive electric bikes on the channel, but we do review some. This choice also might surprise you. Best mid-drive electric bike goes to the Himalway Rambler and more specifically the mid-drive one because they sell this in three different Trend variations. Model. Yeah, this is the premium level Rambler. It goes all the way down to just a basic hub drive, which I think even steps down to mechanical disc brakes. Now, JT did the review on this one, so I wanna hear why we chose this particular mid-drive over some of the other mid-drive electric bikes that we've yeah. ridden. But the Rambler stood out to me mostly for its mid-drive system. It uses a Bafang system, but not just any Bafang system, it utilizes the M600. So you get a very powerful high-end mid-drive motor. And unlike most mid-drive bikes, you actually also get the inclusion of a throttle so that you can utilize that motor's power with just the simple push of your thumb. And then up in the front of the bike, helping this stand out even more, you get a air front fork. So you can adjust to your riding terrain. You get some very nice balloon tires so that you have that extra bit of cush you can tune in and adjust via air pressure. And then even stepping up into the handlebars, you get some hydraulic disc brakes. You get a nine speed drivetrain, very nice swept back handlebars, and even a rear rack with included rear brake light. And also standing out is the price point at $2,200. You simply don't find many mid drives around that price point. You usually have to spend even more. So nice job, Hemingway with the Rambler making it our favorite mid-drive electric bike. Nice step through frame. Our next category is best cruiser e-bike. We couldn't really just pick one, so we kind of picked the brand and the winner is the Electric Bike Company. This is a dual motor of the Model R and don't worry, they're not all colored this way. We've reviewed also the Model E, but Electric Bike Company is really known for their cruiser e-bikes. 
They have multiple frame designs. You can just pick which one is your favorite. They come in at very reasonable price points. They're built in the United States and trust us, if you look at this electric bike compared to many of the other ones, you can tell the quality difference. They true their wheels here in the US. They're using a lot of stainless components. So it's also more rust resistant than a lot of the electric bikes that we feature. I absolutely love some of the accessories like their front basket. Of course, this bike has the traditional swept back handlebars, which when you're riding it, puts you in a very upright riding position. And of course, these are the e-bike escape colors. Yeah, so Ryan picked out the color scheme for this bike, but like all electric bike company bikes out there, you can go on and they have a color customizer. You can really make the bike fit whatever sports team or whatever affinity you have, uh, as Ryan is really a big fan of orange, apparently. There's a couple cool other features that they offer, like an integrated alarm. And I'll also call out, this is a beautiful electric bike, at least I think it's beautiful but they also ship their bikes via freight, which means they arrive in the same condition as they do when they leave the factory. That does add to the price, so something to be aware of. I also want to call out this seat because it is among the most comfortable seats on the market and actually comes with the bike, which can't be the said for many electric bikes. And that's why we really chose Electric Bike Company, the brand. As, as the best cruiser bike out there. Yep. All right, let's get to the next category. I know this looks like a cargo electric bike, but I promise it isn't. This category is best hunting electric bike. Let's see who won. This is the Blix Ultra, quite the name. Now, JT and I, we don't hunt, but I do sell a lot of e-bikes to people that hunt, and this is exactly what they want. This is a more long tail fat tire electric bike, so you get increased stability. It's also very modular, but more importantly, people don't wanna to have to worry about range anxiety, especially if they find themselves out in the woods hunting a deer. And what makes this fat tire electric bike unique is it has dual batteries, and of course it can tackle all terrain. As Ryan already said, we are not hunters, but I do live in the middle of hunting land, so I'm a hunter by proxy. And so this bike, as I know what some of those guys utilize their other UTVs, ATVs for, this bike would fit that. Range anxiety, its modularity is a big one. And then the rear motor on this bike, it is a very capable motor. It has a lot of torque, so it should be able to get them up and going if maybe they're trying to carry uh, a deer on, say, a rear trailer or something like that. The Blix Ultra definitely fits those needs very nicely. It does come in at the higher end of some of the fat tire electric bikes. That's, of course, due to the dual battery, but you get it well specced. And even more, Blix is a US-based company with US-based support. And that's why we chose them for our best hunting electric bike. Now, while we aren't hunters, we are mountain bikers. Let's get to the next category, best electric mountain bike that we've reviewed. And the winner is the Denago EXC1. It comes in just under our price point of $3,000 at $2749. We simply haven't seen many companies offering affordable e-mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially that come in as nicely spectrally as this bike is. It uses, first of all, the biggest thing for us on electric mountain bikes is mid-drives. That mid-drive motor really just allows it to feel more like a normal mountain bike and just kind of amplify your power that you're putting in. But you also get 9-speed drivetrain, hydraulic disc brakes, and that motor and mid-drive system are from the new Bafang lineup. Yeah, this is the M410, and we also tested the 510. Highly recommend that you check out our video because we really put these e-mountain bikes to the test. They're outfitted with an SR Suntour XCM32 front suspension. And overall, if you're looking for a entry-level e-mountain bike, you can't go wrong. And even more, JT loves that this bike can be upgraded. Absolutely, yeah. The EXC2 does come in outfitted. It hits over the price point that we set the cap at for all these bikes, but it does come outfitted with a dropper seat post, a little bit upgraded front fork. But outside of that, the really the root, the meat and potatoes of the bikes are the same. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, even if you stay under the $3,000 price point and stick with the EXC1. And that's why we chose the Denago EXC1 for our best e-mountain bike. All right, on to the next one. 
We had to go over the $3,000 price point just a little bit for this category. And we made that exception because this is the fun category, the best, most fun electric bike. And the winner is the Aerial Rider Grizzly. This is a beast. Yeah, it's a uh, crazy to put it lightly. It is the most fun. Most fun being you get dual motors, dual batteries, and dual suspension. So it really doubles everything that you get from a standard e-bike and just kind of goes above and beyond. The power that this bike outputs is a lot of fun. Has to be done responsibly though. Make sure you're, if you, this is a bike you're considering that you are very aware of where you're doing the uh, throttle usage. But overall, this bike, I, I mean, I 30, well into the 30 mile an hour range on this bike with a little sweat for coming from it and 35 amp hours of capacity between the two batteries. And if you've never ridden a dual motor electric bike, the traction cannot be compared to a, a single motor. I've tested them out extensively on snow and ice. So whoever decided to put two motors on an electric bike, had to live in a colder climate near snow and ice because yeah. uh, we tow, use these to tow our kids around on the frozen lakes once they get a little denser or and all as well up and down the sledding hill so you don't have to carry, you don't have to walk up and down it. So, and you have that nice 35 amp hour so you can do that for hours and tire your kids out without breaking a sweat yourself, so it's nice. So if you're looking for a fun electric bike, you can't go wrong with Aerial Rider. It's a brand that we recommend and they do a really great job with their moped style electric bikes. All right, with that, we have some brand awards to give out before we get into what we expect for the rest of 2024. We have two awards. The first award we're giving out, we're calling this the e-bike escape innovator of the year. An innovator, the definition, a person or company in this instant who introduces new methods, ideas, or products who did we choose? We chose Ride One Up. And I know to some of you out there that may seem like the easy button, but Ride One Up came out with a slew of e-bikes this year that really kind of changed, it really changed their ethos on e-bikes. The models they launched in 2023 started with the Rev One and the Tourist, another commuter style electric bike. And then they launched the Rift, their fat tire electric bike, continuing out throughout the summer. They then launched the Portola and then the Prodigy V2. And then most recently, the CF Racer, which is their road slash gravel electric bike, comes in two variations. So they just exploded the lineup. It's clear they're growing very aggressively. And the next award, we had to do a best e-bike brand award. And that is going to Electric. And that again, not gonna be much of a surprise to most of you out there, but Electric is a brand that time and time again, they either chose to do right by most of their customers, they chose to put money in the correct places, or, and then on top of that, they even chose to just give away some of the money or their profits from the previous year. So Electric partnered with Beast Philanthropy throughout 2023, doing some really cool projects and at the same time launching improvements to their electric bikes. We already talked about the XP trike. Then they introduced hydraulic disc brakes on the XP 3.0. And then in late 2023, they announced the X Peak, which we did a review on, and we're so excited to finally get our hands on it. So if you're interested in more electric content, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more. And it's a brand that is doing all of the right things. And we don't have the exact data, but I'm going to assume that they are also the largest seller of electric bikes in North America. Certainly have the best selling model with their XP series. That's why they're deserving of the best e-bike brand. Congratulations to Electric. You guys have done an awesome job. All right, for the rest of the year, for 2024, I expect some brands to fall by the wayside, which is why you see us focus here at eBike Escape on brands that we can truly recommend. Last year, there was definitely a point where demand kind of dropped off. There was oversupply of many electric bikes. We saw huge slashes to prices. And I don't think that every electric bike brand is going to come out of this alive. So we're keeping a close eye on that for the rest of 2024. So even more previously, I suggest that you buy an electric bike from
from a more reputable brand from many that we feature here on the channel. And one of my predictions for 2024 is kind of gonna be that I think e-bike brands are gonna get away from your just your traditional commuter and kind of your standard off the shelf bike. I think we're gonna see a lot more niche bikes. And what that means like Ride One Up is doing with their CF Racer, coming out with a really budget oriented carbon fiber gravel slash road bike. I think we're gonna see some more, I'm hoping also a little bit, we're gonna see more electric mountain bikes as well as maybe some other budget oriented electric gravel bikes. And of course, we're bound to see new launches throughout the rest of the year. We haven't seen a whole lot of new models from Rad Power Bikes, so I'm curious what they're working on behind the scenes. And we've already gotten a few tips on some electric bikes that we should expect to review in spring. So be sure to subscribe for the latest and greatest because we're gonna be out with some pretty fun electric bike reviews as soon as the weather starts getting better. Another big thing too, Ryan and I, we have a lot of experience and we've ridden a lot of bikes, but we do not know everything. So if you have some other recommendations, be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. Also, we will have some discussion on things like this in our Facebook group. So just if you're looking for a little bit more of a open conversation about e-bikes in general, be sure to check out our Facebook group. Link will be down in the description. Thank you so much for your watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you did like it, give it a like and be sure you you're subscribed for future electric bike content. And we're hoping to make this an annual thing. So help improve our budget for next year. Yeah. Let's get some more brands involved. Let's get some more feedback from you guys yeah. down in the comment section. We can perfect the categories as well. Maybe some categories aren't fitting for what you guys out there want. Let us know. And with that, thanks for watching. And we'll see, see you guys in the next, next one. one.